Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless so for months and months and months we've been covering this story the canadian shop teacher who pulled his entire class into his very obscure sexual fetish by wearing size z prosthetic breasts and calling himself kayla lemieux because it kind of tells you everything. Why is this allowed? There are kids in the class. So this guy's finally been placed on leave. The school board in Ontario only took the steps after parents, some of them immigrant parents, threatened to th sue the school. This went on for so long because there is a well-funded effort to erase women, of course, both in Canada and the United States. Hershey's, by the way, is now putting the face of a man posing as a woman on chocolate bar wrappers. This dude is called Faye Johnstone, called himself a proud slut, and said his female critics should be vilified so they, quote, don't dare to speak their views publicly. Okay. Here's Faye Johnstone, not a fascist or anything, who, by the way, runs a, quote, LBGTQ consulting firm that makes a ton of dough from Canada's government. Watch. My name is Faye Johnstone. I'm the executive director of Wisdom to Action. We can create a world where everyone is able to live in public space as their honest and authentic selves. See the woman changing how we see the future at Hershey's Canada. <laughs> I mean, like, what? <laughs> Women, don't worry, we're not replacing you. Don't worry, everything's cool. Deuteronomy 22.5 A woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man, nor shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all who do so are an abomination to the Lord your God. Being transgender is at odds with science and God's design, as we read in Genesis 126 and 27. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. Somehow, in some mysterious and wonderful way, the human male and female, in both body and spirit, are the image and likeness of God. Satan hates mankind because we are created in God's image. He is sowing confusion in the minds of our children, and he is busy in these last days devouring those who are not steadfast in the faith, as we read in 1 Peter 5, 8-11. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Jesus prophesied of future plagues associated with the last days, as we read in Luke 21:11, And there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. Veterinarian Walter Silva combs long stretches of beach every day, searching for sea lions suspected of being infected with avian flu. This young female died most likely because of the virus. She could not swim, not only because of respiratory problems, but its effects on the central nervous system. Since January, Silva and other researchers have been taking samples to determine if more than 700 sea lions have died of the virus. Many of the dead have washed ashore along Peru's coast. 
Others, like this one, lie helpless. Experts say they live in colonies, many in protected areas, infecting each other. It's the first time the virus attacks this way. We had not seen a case like this, the wildlife being affected in such large quantities. Here in the beach resort of Pucusana, Soila Rodriguez says she's worried because the sea lions are dying near bathers. The stench is horrible. It's full of flies and they cough day and night. Nature has spared some species from being infected, but others are being decimated. More than 60,000 wild birds have died since the virus was detected in November in Peru. More than 200 million birds have died or called around the world since 2021 because of the avian flu. Researchers here say they're afraid the virus has mutated and can now infect from mammal to mammal and rapidly expand into people's homes. Ten-year-old lady is being tested for a cough. Her owner, Marcia Sanchez, blames the sea lions ill on the platforms of this sea resort. I think we're sitting on a time bomb with so many animals ill. And we're also mammals. Who knows if we can also get sick? The National Forestry and Wildlife Service says more than 100,000 sea lions are at risk. Many survive, but there's no cure and many infected are likely to die. And, unable to say what is the real danger for humans, they advise people to stay away. Various outbreaks of pandemic diseases such as Ebola or the coronavirus have prompted many to ask why God allows or even causes pandemic diseases and whether such illnesses are a sign of the end times. God brought plagues and diseases on his people and on his enemies to make them see his power. As we read in Exodus 9.14 and verse 16, For at this time I will send all my plagues to your very heart, and on your servants, and on your people, that you may know that there is none like me in all the earth. But indeed, for this purpose I have raised you up, that I may show my power in you, and that my name may be declared in all the earth. God destroyed many people for various acts of disobedience, as we read in Numbers 16.46 and verse 49. So Moses said to Aaron, Take a censer and put fire in it from the altar, put incense on it, and take it quickly to the congregation and make atonement for them. For wrath has gone out from the Lord. The plague has begun. Now those who died in the plague were 14,700, besides those who died in the Korah incident. Again, in the book of Numbers, God acts on disobedience. Numbers 25, 1-3, and verse 9. Now Israel remained in Acacia Grove, and the people began to commit harlotry with the women of Moab. They invited the people to the sacrifices of their gods, and the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So Israel was joined to Baal of Peor, and the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel. And those who died in the plague were 24,000. It's sometimes hard to understand why our loving and merciful God would display such anger and wrath toward his people. But remember this, God's punishments always have the goal of repentance and restoration. Second Chronicles 7, 13, and 14. When I shut up heaven, and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves, and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and heal their land. In these verses of scripture, we see God using disaster to draw his people to himself, to bring about repentance and the desire to come to him as children to their heavenly father. The spread of viruses such as Ebola and the coronavirus are just a foretaste of pandemics that will be part of the end times. Scores of dead fish littering the beach. There's just, there's just dead fish everywhere. Respiratory issues causing problems for humans. My wife's been coughing and I've been coughing. And that, we're actually leaving now because I got like a scratchy throat. All this caused by red tide. Red tide is officially known as harmful algal blooms, and they periodically occur in oceans. Right now, the west coast of Florida is taking a hit. This beachgoer told WINK. I was stunned when I saw this. We saw some big fish this morning, but this is incredible. There's, there's no words for it. 
Dead fish of all sizes washed onto the shore with the tides. The harmful algae in the Gulf of Mexico waters off of Florida is called Carinia brevis. It causes oxygen levels in the water to drop greatly, killing marine life. There's just thousands of dead fish. It's terrible. I've experienced red tide. This year it's stronger. People have coughs. Particles of Carinia brevis toxins release into the air when thrashed around by ocean waves. For some people, that can cause coughing and sore throats when it's breathed in. Humans don't cause red tide, but they can make it worse. Red tides occur naturally, but rising air and ocean temperatures could mean the harmful algal blooms are larger and more frequent. Hosea 4, 1 through 3. Hear the word of the Lord, O children of Israel. For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. There is no faithfulness or steadfast love, and no knowledge of God in the land. There is swearing, lying, murder, stealing, and committing adultery. They break all bounds, and bloodshed follows bloodshed. Therefore the land mourns, and all who dwell in it languish. And also the beasts of the field, and the birds of the heavens, and even the fish of the sea are taken away. God is judging the world in these last days the same way he judged Israel in Hosea 4.3. The prophet Hosea tells us the reasons God judged Israel. No faithfulness or steadfast love, no knowledge of God in the land, swearing, bearing false witness, lying, murder, stealing, and adultery. Of all the things to pay attention to, the food supply has got to be pretty close to the top of the list, and that's why we covered it when large numbers of chickens began dying around the country. Now cows are dying. The culprit appears to be an outbreak of a tick-borne disease called Thalaria. That outbreak is believed to have begun in New Jersey in 2017, then spread to Northern Virginia, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, and beyond. Christopher Haskins is a commercial beef farmer in beautiful Chatham, Virginia, the far southern part of the state. He says he's lost 41 cows since August. That's cost him 60 grand. Tell us what this is and how it's affected your herd. About in August, um, we generally start calving in September of every year. Uh, in August, though, we start keeping a check on our cattle herd just to make sure everything is, is going as planned. Uh, on August the 4th, I found a, a cow that had, that had passed away. I uh, didn't think much of it at the time. You're going to lose a cow every now and then in this business. That following week, though, I found another cow that, it, that had passed. And I told my father, I said, you know, that something's going on here. I'm not quite what, you know, sure what it is. I, they weren't due to calf at that time. Well, then by the third week of August, we were losing multiple cows a day. Fortunately, my wife's a veterinarian, and I've got some good relationships with other veterinarians in my area. Uh, so we got some cattle up. Uh, I had some ca cows having calving problems, and I normally never have that. Uh, maybe I pull one calf a year from a cow assisted, you know, assisted birth. I had four in two days, and so. Um, on a Monday, that third week of August, I noticed a cow that wasn't just wasn't acting right, uh, staying down to the creek by herself in the shade when the others were out grazing. So uh, I tried to feed this cow and she tried to attack me. And so then I knew something was up. So I contacted one of the local large animal vets and, and told him that I knew I had a problem in my herd uh, and I was pretty sure this animal would die within the next few hours. And if he could come draw a blood sample, I sure would appreciate it because at the moment, she was in, uh, wasn't, we weren't going to be able to draw blood from her being in the shape she was in. The cow died within a couple of hours. The, the vet came out, drew the blood. The blood looked like Kool-Aid. It was very watery uh, where the cow was so anemic. And he sent that off to our local lab. And unfortunately, I kept losing cattle throughout the week before I got the results back. And that Wednesday morning, I uh, about mentally and Physically, I really had it, to be honest with you, so I contacted VDAX here in Virginia looking for somewhere that maybe could take a, do a necropsy for me because I knew I was going to lose an animal that day. I just didn't know when, and, um, and that evening I lost two more animals, and, and I loaded a, that, one of the animals up and took it for a necropsy in, uh, in Whitfield, Virginia at a lab. That next day, I was told by the veterinarian that did the necropsy that more than likely it was this disease, Tyleria, and the, the spleen of the animal was two times the normal size and it was very jaundiced or yellow inside. And so that's when I, you know, that's when we knew what was going on. Uh, but then my animals continued to die. The, I, I lost my last one on October the 12th.
Christopher Atkins, Haskins, thank you so much from Shannon, Virginia. I'd like to keep track of that stuff, and I, I hope it doesn't spread much farther than it already has. For those who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, disease should be a reminder that life on this earth is fragile and can be lost at any moment. As bad as pandemics are, hell will be far worse. The Christian, however, has the assurance of salvation and the hope of eternity because of the blood of Christ shed on the cross for us as we read in Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Turning now to the war in Ukraine, the Ukrainian military is conducting drills near the border with Belarus to protect against any new Russian invasion from the north. This comes as America's top diplomat met briefly with Russia's foreign minister to demand an end to the war. MTS Taib is near the Belarusian border. In their first meeting since the war in Ukraine began over a year ago, Secretary of State Antony Blinken's message to his Russian counterpart was clear. End this war of aggression. Engage in meaningful diplomacy that can produce a just and durable peace. But until there is a lasting peace, Ukrainian forces aren't taking any chances. These drills on the northern front follow warnings the Kremlin is planning a renewed offensive in the spring. This maze of trenches was built after Russian forces crossed over here from Belarus as part of their failed push towards Kyiv last February, says this Ukrainian commander. If Russian forces move over this border, are you ready for them? Yes, and we've prepared a lot of presents for them, he says with a wry smile. These trenches could be straight out of World War I, but make no mistake, these men have modern technology at their fingertips. Another soldier demonstrates a reconnaissance drone used to scour the skies and border for any signs of trouble. So this is inside Belarus. Da, da, da. But in Ukraine's east, the fighting is only intensifying, with the town of Bakhmut now nearly all under Russia's control, making protecting the north an even higher priority. Tonight, Russia's desperate attempts to conquer the East met with fierce resistance. Here, Russian tanks crossed Ukraine's frozen landscape and then obliterated in a huge cloud of smoke. <laughs> Heavy losses on both sides in the battle for Bakhmut. More than 70,000 lived here before the war. Now, there's almost nothing left. This as Belarus President Lukashenko, Putin's closest ally, met with President Xi in Beijing. There are growing fears that China may seek to arm Russia. The two men touted China's 12-point plan for peace, a proposal which doesn't say Russian troops should leave Ukraine. Putin is preparing to host Xi in Moscow this spring. And today, Secretary Blinken saying there is zero evidence that Putin was ready to engage in serious peace talks. Ukraine war counting thousands of casualties in the past year of war, with thousands having to leave their homes to fight for their land. And this time, Russia is apparently seeking for fighters in another place. A Lebanese government security source telling the media line that Palestinians residing in Lebanon have signed up to join the ongoing conflict in Ukraine on behalf of Russia, being offered a shocking sum of $350 by Russian entities. The media line saying the individuals reportedly receiving a monthly pay and compensation for their families in exchange for agreeing to participate in the war. The Lebanese security source further indicating that the recruitment of Palestinians and others is being carried out in coordination with the Hezbollah organization. At a camp outside Taiwan's capital, civilians hone their shooting skills. This is more than a gun club. As tensions have spiked between Beijing and Taipei, people here say they're preparing to defend their homeland. I think doing uh, this training will help for when we are uh, against China's threat. Uh, we can show our will very clearly that we are not going to surrender. In December, the U.S. Congress authorized $10 billion in military aid for Taiwan, running until 2027, citing what it called a coordinated Chinese campaign to weaken Taiwan, diplomatically, economically and militarily. China views Taiwan as part of its territory and says its policy remains one of reunification, reserving the right to use force if necessary. It criticizes what it calls American collusion with Taipei, something Beijing says was exacerbated by then House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan last year. Taiwan's western Kinmen Island is just two kilometers from the Chinese mainland. 
Aging beach defences stand in memory to a famous victory over communist forces here in 1949. But some fear the capacity to mount such a defence now is lacking. If China invades Taiwan, even in the presence of the US and Western countries' support, it will be a daunting task to fight off. In the absence of foreign support, it's only a matter of time before China takes over the island. Last month, a leaked memo from a U.S. four-star general predicted a Chinese invasion of Taiwan and a U.S.-China conflict in 2025. It was criticized as irresponsible by some, warmongering by others. Many in Taiwan will hope it was just plain wrong. Lincoln says he's not meeting with China's top diplomats at the G20, despite last month's Chinese spy flight and the country's growing partnership with Russia. Here to react, Asia expert and Gatestone Institute senior fellow Gordon Chang. Gordon, thank you so much for being with us. You know, why won't this administration stand up to China when they're a clear threat? I mean, obviously Russia's a threat too, but especially considering what's happened in the last few weeks with the spy craft and not only that, but how close China and Russia are getting. Yes, this really is disturbing. And the point is that every once in a while, Blinken will say something about China. But what we don't see are the policies that are necessary for the urgency of the situation. You know, for instance, the administration will talk about fentanyl. The State Department talked about fentanyl last week, but it didn't mention China. How can you talk about this deadly drug disease that the Communist Party of China is behind? Because they got this near total surveillance state, Ashley, and these fentanyl gangs couldn't operate without the backing, the full backing of the Communist Party. Looking at China and Russia together, has has this Biden administration done enough to basically make those two countries pariahs on the world stage, which is something specifically China is trying to avoid because they don't necessarily want to be a diplomat or have diplomatic problems with a lot of countries when they're really kind of singularly focused on us. The Biden administration doesn't want to acknowledge what the rest of the world can see, and that is China and Russia are now working closely together across the board. You know, the Biden administration will warn China about supplying lethal assistance to Russia, but Beijing has been doing that from the very beginning of this war. And recently, we have seen these reports about China selling drones to the Wagner Group for use in Ukraine, and we hear these reports from the Breaking Defense website that almost every day, a very, very large actually the largest cargo plane in the world, leaves central China with ammunition and other high consumption rate items. So the Biden administration owes an explanation to the American people. Are these reports false? I, don't, I believe they're true. But they, Biden has to say, are these false? And if it's, if it's not false, then why has he been lying to the American people about this lethal assistance that has been going on now for about a year? Luke, 2125. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days right before the return of Jesus Christ is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. Israel spiraling out of control with inner turmoil. Violent protests erupting of Israelis on their own government. The unprecedented demonstrations reaching a breaking point. The rare uprising blocking roads and disrupting trains, clashing with police who fired stun grenades and water cannons. It's all happening as thousands of people across the country took to the streets on Wednesday during a nationwide day of disruption. For two months, Israel has been experiencing regular protests against Prime Minister Netanyahu's plan to reform the courts, which he says is necessary to curb what he calls activist judges. But opponents say it's pushing the country towards authoritarianism. Crowds even gathered outside an upscale hair salon where Netanyahu's wife, Sarah, was getting her hair done. Some chanting in Hebrew, quote, the country is burning and Sarah is getting a haircut. Israeli media said police were called to her aid and she was removed from the scene unharmed. Her husband later tweeting, the anarchy must stop. It can cost lives. And the protests even extended to outside their home in Jerusalem. That demonstrator alluding to a Palestinian village in the occupied West Bank where violence is the worst in 20 years, according to the Palestinian Health Ministry. As Israel copes with its own internal unrest, it is also dealing with a wave of violence with the Palestinians uh, in the occupied uh, West Bank. 
An Israeli raid of a safe house left 11 Palestinians dead last week. With militants, the Israeli Defense Forces said they were targeting among them, along with some civilians. Then two Israelis were killed, leading to a mob of Jewish settlers setting Palestinian homes and cars on fire, leaving one dead. Netanyahu calling for peace and saying people should not take the law into their own hands, but also vowing to expand the settlements. The newly appointed hardliner finance minister Bezalel Smotrich calling on the Israeli government to wipe out the village. <laughs> Saying in Hebrew, I think the village of Hawara needs to be erased. I think the state of Israel should do it. The U.S. State Department condemning his comments. These comments were irresponsible. They were repugnant. They were disgusting. And just as we condemn Palestinian incitement to violence, uh, we condemn these provocative remarks that also amount to incitement to violence. The turmoil putting pressure on Israel's government across multiple fronts as the country braces for more violence. As Israel copes with its own internal unrest, it is also dealing with a wave of violence with the Palestinians uh, in the occupied uh, West Bank. So who does the land of Israel actually belong to? Israel was given to the Jews forever, and God first made that promise to Abraham, as we read in Genesis 13, 14 through 17. And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, Lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see I give to you and your descendants forever, and I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. The promise was then confirmed to his son Isaac, as we read in Genesis 26.3, Dwell in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I give all these lands, and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. The promise was then confirmed to Isaac's son, Jacob, Abraham's grandson, as we read in Genesis 28.10-13. Now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night, because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head, and he lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set upon the earth, and its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and your descendants. The promised land was described in terms of the territory from the river of Egypt to the Euphrates River, as we read in Genesis 15:18. On the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I have given this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. God then reaffirmed the promise when he changed Jacob's name to Israel, as we read in Genesis 35, 9-12. Then God appeared to Jacob again when he came from Padan Aram, and blessed him. And God said to him, Your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be called Jacob any more, but Israel shall be your name. So he called his name Israel. Also God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall proceed from you, and kings shall come from your body. The land which I gave Abraham and Isaac I give to you, and to your descendants after you I give this land. As we can plainly see, God gave Israel to the Jews. For this violence to end, the occupation must end. Those are the words of Voyka Turk, the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, as he presented his latest report on the situation in Israel and Palestine. Decade upon decade of loss and violence. Violence against the occupation, violence to uphold and, in, and enforce it. I condemn the violence that has killed and harmed so many people on both sides, and which generates overwhelming despair. Last year marked two tragic records for the region. It saw both the highest number of Palestinians killed in 17 years and the highest number of Israelis killed since 2016. In all, there were 131 Palestinians and 13 Israeli victims of the fighting. And three months into 2023, there's no end to the violence, as hundreds of Palestinians in the West Bank mourn the death of a teenage boy after he was shot and killed by Israeli forces on Thursday. In the last days, the prophet Zechariah tells us Israel will be the focal point of world conflict and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against Jerusalem. 
Zechariah 12, 2 and 3 Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples, when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day, that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. A new round of extreme weather is causing trouble for people across the country today. Multiple tornadoes tore through Texas and Louisiana overnight, leaving hundreds of thousands of homes and businesses without power. This is the same storm that dumped all that snow on California, and it is headed east. These storms came through here so quickly last night. Take a look at this laundromat behind me. There were people inside at the time, and there were children in one of the cars parked out front where the debris came down. Fortunately, no one was hurt but it made for a very rough night here. Tornado crossing the road right in front of us. This is the moment a tornado ripped through Winsboro, Texas last night. We got debris in the air. Sending splintered scraps from torn apart buildings hundreds of feet into stormy skies. Tornado on the ground. A storm chaser captured another tornado as it battered the town of Picton, east of Dallas, damaging five homes. Wow. A similar sight in many communities across Texas and Louisiana. This is Little Elm, Texas, where at least six cars and trucks were buried under bricks, metal beams, and other debris when devastating winds collapsed a shopping center. It just was like a boom. It was on us. We got a tornado on the ground. In the Dallas area, wind gusts as high as 80 miles an hour, downing power lines and plunging hundreds of thousands into the dark. At least 30 people were forced from their homes in this Hearst apartment complex after wind tore the roof off a building. The only thing I hear in the, the top of the house is going like boom, 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 everywhere. And in Bulk Springs, gusts reached 70 miles per hour, destroying an Amazon hub. No one was hurt. Here in Shreveport, search and rescue efforts underway after a reported tornado destroyed several businesses. Total chaos. Wind, I mean, glass breaking out everywhere. First, first tornado I've ever been in. It was a tough 12 hours here in the Mid South. Not just those tornadoes, but a widespread damaging wind event. You see the roof, a corrugated steel roof of this home uh, ripped off, and on top of really a, an old growth uh, a tree, lots of trees down all over this place. The power of this storm, this rear windshield blown out. This is one of at least 20 homes uh, badly damaged or destroyed here in Kirby. And then look at this a two by six uh, piece of wood here just piercing this windshield. This was probably a tornado, but who knows? I mean, it came in the middle of the night. Uh, some other tornadoes that came through in tree near the LSU Shreveport campus. This tornado did some damage to homes there and also to some businesses. Also in, in, uh, in Tompkins County, uh, some, uh, a tornado there with some damage. And then Dallas just got crushed with 76, 80 mile per hour winds, Fort Worth too. And some video of uh, some trailers uh, flipped over just north of uh, Dallas and southeast Oklahoma got hammered with hail and this hail and all these winds and this parent storm which continues to strengthen that is all heading east today. Now to the dangerous night of weather from the deep south to the northeast. At least seven people have died from a line of powerful storms. Pounding rain flooded Alabama today along with hurricane strength winds. Three people were killed by falling trees in that state alone. The storm also knocked trees onto homes in the Nashville area. Kentucky's governor declared a state of emergency as the storms headed east from Louisiana and Texas where several tornadoes were reported last night. This morning, the dire need for basic essentials is growing in the mountain communities east of Los Angeles, where back-to-back -back storms dumped up to seven feet of snow. Oh, it blew the side off of it. Some areas of San Bernardino County have been cut off for 10 days. Deputies and firefighters were seen preparing a helicopter to deliver ready-to-eat meals known as MREs in the military. In Crestline, the community's only grocery store is badly damaged, the roof collapsing under the weight of the snow piled several feet high. The family of Goodwins is the heart of this community. The fact, I mean, I'm tearing up now. It's sad. Tracelyn Sherritt says someone in her household needs medicine, but there is no way to get it. He was unprepared only because he had just moved here. And we, my husband and I, have plenty of medication. He does not. He has a heart medication he needs. The concern also growing about what happens to all of that snow in the coming months. Will it melt steadily, replenishing water reserves, 
or will warm temperatures and other weather events cause rapid evaporation and flooding? Either way, experts say one good season of rain and snow cannot make up for years of drought. system that's moving north now started in the west as well, and there is a remarkable scene still playing out there tonight. In California, San Bernardino County, families have been cut off for days in the snow. Officials struggling to reopen roads. The National Guard now flying in, promising to help get people out. And look at this tonight. Families riding in the snow there help us. This is in the Lake Gregory area and people waiting in long lines at a food distribution site in Crestline for so many after a treacherous drive just to get there. That desperate plea written in the snow, help us. Tonight, an all out desperate effort to free families, some trapped for more than a week in San Bernardino County. The roads are being cleared, there are snow plows everywhere and you are going to see direct relief coming to your doorsteps shortly. We saw that firsthand in Crestline. These first responders with Cal Fire have been working overnight to try and make roads like this one accessible. In this case, they're trying to help the gentleman who lives in this house get his car out so he can go see his mother in the hospital. Cassidy and Casey Ringhover have been trying to dig out of their home in Crestline for more than a week. You can see Casey's baby on her back as she shovels. A few days ago, we were standing on top of our cars shoveling them out, but our road is just too packed in to even leave past this point. They are helping families nearby who have rented Airbnbs and are running out of food. Overnight, firefighters struggling in the snowy conditions, dragging hoses over massive snowbanks, fighting multiple house fires caused by leaking gas lines. Officials responding to 1,200 calls for help, removing enough snow to fill the Empire State Building twice. Luke 21, 26 through 28. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, Repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church, you may be at work, you may be asleep, God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready!
time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.